Welcome back to the Burnout Bob YouTube channel. In today's video, we are working on this 2022 brand new Honda Ruckus. This one behind me is going very simple. We're doing the stage two kit, so it's gonna be fun to see. We're doing a stage two kit. We'll see what we can get this thing up to with that. And then we are also doing a 9.5 stretch. So I will be doing the 9.5 stretch first. I feel like that's gonna be the, the harder, I guess, task to tackle. So I'll record that, do the 9.5 stretch first, and then I will go to the stage two kit, putting all that stuff on. Because while I'm taking the stretch, I'll take the air box off while I'm doing it, and then you can see the best of both worlds. Hope you guys are enjoying the content. I've gained a lot of new subscribers, like I said, the last video. Very happy about that, thank you. Hope you guys like the new backdrop. I took a little time off so that I could work on this backdrop make it a little bit better for the videos. So you can see I got the sign from 617 Signs. Hooked it up with the neons. Got that there. And we got the 2022 Ruckus with my favorite color gray. So as, you, as I said, this thing is brand new. Has See if we can focus there. 38 miles on it. So, again, task at hand. We're going to take this thing apart, 9.5 stretch. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the seat frame off. It just makes things a lot easier. I'm going to remove the factory top floorboard panel. Do it to make it easier because you're going to want to get to the fuel line and then eventually you're going to take the brake and throttle cable off. And we'll just go through it. What I'm going to do is record tell you what I'm doing so like next right now I'm doing the seat frame which is this these six bolts there's three on this side three on the other side this whole seat's gonna come off and afterwards you have 10 mil bolts there's probably six or so on this top plastic panel that you're gonna take off put it to a time lapse do that and then I'll cut to the next scene where I'll be back to talking and tell you exactly what I'm gonna do time lapse and keep going back and forth this way it's a little bit more of a how to at the same time. Okay, so as promised, C frame is off. You can see the six bolts, one, two, three. Boom, boom, both sides. You had the two 10 mils up here. There was two more down in the middle here, right there, and then you have the for for the tank cover there. Once you pop those out, you're gonna have two Phillips heads, one right here, and then one that's a little recessed in right there. You take those out, take it off. I took the battery box cover off because this plastic piece, the floorboard slides up underneath it and I just don't wanna put any pressure on it. So to make it an easier dismount, I just took the back half of the box off, plus I'm going to be doing the CDI install eventually, so just made more sense to me. So now that you have all this off, we're going to get to what you have to unplug on the factory harness and undo to get ready for this 9.5 stretch. Okay, so now that you have the top cover off, you're going to want to loosen up all the different wires. So there's one in the middle here, this little tie down. You're going to loosen that up. You're going to do the same with this middle one here, just to create some room because you're gonna want this motor to go back. So you're gonna do the brake cable, throttle cable, since you're removing these. You're gonna do the coolant line. I would take this off just for the time being. You can always, we're gonna put everything back on afterwards. But this is just to make sure that you have a feasible amount of room to put this mount on and then push this motor back. So even little things like the coil wires. I'm gonna pull that off and pull it through. There's gonna be also an auto chuck and a richener 
you're gonna pop both of these off the carb as well. And then just start working away. As we go through, I'm gonna time lapse this like I said, and then I'll go back through and tell you everything that I, I did. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I've done here. I unplugged the crankcase breather that goes back to the air box here. That's out. There's another line that goes right through underneath the tank here that's open. You'll see it's open on two ends like this. Don't sweat it when one's capped, but just pull that out. You have the one that goes to the side of the carburetor here. I'm taking that out because I'm doing the air box kit already. We have the coolant line that goes to the reservoir. We have the line that goes from the PZV valve to the air box that we removed. It comes off to the side here. I have to unplug this last clip. Well, actually, I'll leave that plugged in right here. Remove the other PCV valve that goes to the motor. The hose goes underneath here. I unplug the stator clips, all of them that are in this big rubber boot here. The throttle cable is out. The brake cable unscrewed from the back here it comes out and then there's a little hook underneath here so make sure you slide it out of that hook or else it'll pinch. You want this to be free and out of the way. The shock is a 14 mil so you just use a 14, take that out, leave the kickstand down, here's a little tip, leave the kickstand down because that will hold the whole weight of the motor when it's off of the bike. For the front, I suggest that you put underneath, something underneath the front center cross member of the frame. So what I did here is use the jack and put it underneath there. And then before I start to dismount the motor from the frame, I'm going to go ahead and strap the handlebars to my tie down points right here. If you don't have that, just have two people because you'll just need somebody to hold this while you're pulling the motor out. It's very simple. One of the last steps now that everything's unplugged, like I said, the throttle cable, just so you can see there, is out. You want to make sure nothing is still attached. I may have missed something. It's all in a PDF. So when you order the 9.5 stretch kit from the Ruck Shop, if you go to their website for the link, scroll down, a lot of their parts have either YouTube videos for it or PDF links. So you can click on it and there's printable instructions or downloadable instructions. So. If you ever have questions, concerns, it's all there. The fuel line right here comes up and around and goes in. I cap that off and just put a little M6 bolt on there right now because I'm going to remove it from the check valve from that fitting right there. Put the new fuel line that's provided by the ruck shop, run that from there up to the carb once it's all said and done. So next what you're going to do is remove these frame caps here. They should come up by hand. If not, you can use a little thin flathead, pull them out. In there are going to be your engine bolts. There's going to be one on each side. I believe those are, these are actually, sorry, 14s. So these are 14 mils. You're going to unbolt this one, this one. You're going to feel a little jolt happen. That's just the, the there's bushings on the inside here. That's going to be the bolts dropping the motor down with that. The one thing you want to make sure is clear is this hose right here, when you're pulling the motor, it's going to get yanked out through here. So push this PCV hose through this bracket and go down so this is completely out of there. You have nothing holding you up. Same thing with these wires here. You don't want them to be hanging over. Tuck them down and under because when you're pulling this motor back, you want it to not get hung up on anything on this crossbar here. So I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod, undo those bolts, and start to bring this motor back. Alright, and with these two 14 mil bolts out, I lifted the jack up a little bit because you have this rubber brace right here that sits underneath this cross brace on the bike, and once that rubber bushing I guess you would call it drops out sometimes it could get stuck in there depending on how old the bike is once that comes down then you can literally just roll 
the back half of the motor completely off. But you can see everything's unhooked, there's no cables, it's all good. So now what I am going to do is remove the factory mount. So this is your factory engine brace right here, this black bracket crosses over. You have a nylock on this side and then another 14 right here. So just put an open end wrench on there, put the 14 in here, impact, unbolt that, pull this bolt through. This bracket, this metal bracket right here is going to come right off and then we'll go ahead and start getting ready to put the 9.5 bracket on there. I'm going to stop this real quick right here. While I have the motor off the bike and off to the side, what I'm going to do now is put the stage two components on it before any further with the 9.5. It only makes sense to me that while I have this all easily accessible to go ahead and put that stuff on. So if you're here just to watch the video for the 9.5 stretch, you're just, you can just fast forward through this part and then go back to where you see me putting the stretch mount on. This part there are, I'm not going to film a lot of with the exhaust. I'm just going to time lapse the whole thing exhaust and take it all because the ruck shop has a video for every single part in the stage two kit. So if you go to the stage two link on the, or any of the performance parts link on the Honda Ruckus and you look up the stage one or stage two kit, there is a video for every single part in that kit. So for that one, if you guys want to watch the install of it, go to the ruck shop channel for this time. I'm just time lapsing this until I get back to the 9.5. Alright, so now we're back to the 9.5 stretch. With the kit, you're gonna get this bag that has supplied bolts, it has two nuts in it as well. What you're gonna do is keep your two frame bolts that you took out of right here, and you're gonna use these again because what's gonna happen is you're going to put this in. Move this line out of the way. There we go. Put this in and over on the frame. The holes are going to line up in here. And you're going to put the bolt back through. And then you're gonna use the supplied nylock and washers for the backside and then tighten that up. So I just removed the coolant reservoir. I already had it unplugged, so I just moved it so I can get this 9.5 to swing up. Because what the next thing I'm gonna do is, show you real quick, on the top of the stretch here, you have the two M6 holes. And with the supplied M6 bolts and dress up washers, you're gonna put them through the top there. Right, so now that I have the mount secured in here, right now I just have the M6 temporarily in there holding it up because I'm going to put the factory floorboard on and I'm going to have the bolt go through the floorboard then through the mount in there. So to secure it in, I'm going to drop this down on here. I'll do that by lowering down the lift and it should, I'll just shimmy the motor in place and then you're going to put the factory engine bolt right back through again. Okay, so now we have the frame bolt in. You see the 9.5 is taking place. Again, some people who got rid of the factory floorboard and are running like the NCY tank covers, you just put the dress up washers with the bolts right in. Because I'm using the factory floorboard still, I'm just using this to keep it in place. And then I will remove it once I have it all done. The next step is going to be to put in the shock arm. 
which will go right here. It's going to bolt in place. Arm's going to come out, and then we will put the shock to this tab and have it bolted up. What this is going to do once I do that, it's going to pull the pitch of this motor down because you can see the valve cover is sitting pretty high. When I put up the shock, you can push the motor down. One thing to know is, too, the you can adjust the height of the motor by the shock. So the bottom of the shock, which you can turn, that attaches to the motor here, by adjusting the height of that, you can adjust the pitch of your motor. So the nose of the motor is going to react to how you adjust the rear of the shock. So just keep that in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble that on. And then start buttoning everything up in here. And then I'll be able to put the floorboards back on. Okay, so 9.5 stretch is on. The shock arm is on. It's just the one provide, or you use your factory bolt right here and just goes right through into the nut there. I used a little bit of Loctite. Has a little hook section right here that hooks around this bar. Comes back. This one we're using the low boy shock. So just ran the bolt through to the provided nut with the washer. Have the low boy going down. Still has clearance on the stock tire here. I can run my finger between the two, so that's perfectly fine. The only issue is gonna be this factory reflector. I'm going to make a cut behind the plate. I'll take the plate off, make a cut behind this so you don't see it, and then just this reflector will be gone. I don't like how close it sits to the tire, so I talked to the owner bike, he's cool with it. Shock, I'll just have to button up over here at the bottom. We'll call it at that, and then we're going to start buttoning up the coolant lines, plugging everything back in, get this all dialed up front here, as well as uh, the new provided fuel line, run that up to the carb, and then lastly we'll get to the cables. Okay, so I just put the uh, decompression tube on, as you see it came up. Ran it through here and just have it dumping open. I got it zip tied so it's not moving around. 9.5 is completely on now. Everything's good to go. I have both the uh, M6 bolts in there right now. I decided to put them in there and just run it like that. I will say, depending on the shock that you have with the NTY shock, you're going to put the preload up high and then loosen up the bottom here to raise it because with these factory knobbies they have a lot of tread that protrudes so for to make sure you have clearance you just compress the preload on it make it a little bit stiffer and then raise up the shock a little bit you will clear the tire now and then if you are keeping the factory coolant reservoir to keep it in the stock location what I did was I drilled a second hole underneath the original hole so there's the original one I did another one right underneath and then ran the same bolt through. Now the reservoir is secured. You can still keep it in the factory location, so it's still going to be underneath that tray if you're wanting it there. And then it also still clears the stretch bar itself. So you're good to go there because there's going to be no pivoting on this bar due to these bracing brackets here. So I have the 75 inch throttle cable, the plus six brake cable is all good. I'm going to go ahead and put this all together and then the last thing I'm going to do is just uh, cut this tab bracket right underneath here so I have plenty of clearance and get rid of this. I mean it kind of looks tacky as it is so cut that off and then we'll go ahead and take it for a ride.
echoing noise, that's a decompression tube. If I put my finger over the exit of it right here, you notice it goes away. So, that's just, you're hearing the uh, compression coming out. So the hose is just breathing. So, otherwise, it's looking for a spin, running good. About to give it back to the owner. Hope this video was helpful for you guys with installing the 9.5 stretch. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on my uh, platform here with YouTube or on Instagram. And I have a new build series coming up for myself, and then I have a couple other uh, builds coming down. Like I said, one from New York, the other one's going to be coming in from uh, a little bit further south of me in Florida here, just doing a stage 2 kit. And... From there, I'll just keep going. I appreciate you guys and all your support. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe.